Hey everybody, welcome to Plant Based Extravaganza. <laughs> right now, I'm concentrating a lot on plant based milk makers, reviewing them, making recipes in them, and just in general, just seeing how easy it is to make your own homemade plant based milk. Please know that while I'm demoing all these different milk making machines, you can use your blender to make probably most of them. When we get to the soy milk portion of our extravaganza, that's going to be a little bit of a different story, but it doesn't take our blender completely out of the mix. So I'm not trying to make you get a milk maker, but a lot of people are, have been asking me questions about which one to get, what's the differences. I was looking into them myself and I, it was a little confusing, honestly. So, because they all kind of look the same, but they don't all do the same things. And today we're going to look at the almond cow. And the almond cow is different in two ways. Um, one, it's similar to a soy milk maker in that it has kind of its own internal filter to help our filtration process. On the other hand, it doesn't heat at all. So that means no soy milk. No because you have to have heat to make the soy milk to make it properly. So why would you want an almond cow? Maybe you make nut and seed milks mostly, maybe some grain milks. Um, even things like oat groats you can soak and then make with no heat on it. So those are all possibilities. And this one is a a little more expensive than the Mio Mat. There are prices that are way different and they change all the time. So last time when I bought this, I bought it on sale for their Black Friday sale and I got it about $55 off. I think they're normally around $255 right now. They're out of stock, so we'll see if they come back with the same pricing. The Mio Mat costs a little bit less. Um, but has some heating elements. It does not do some of its own straining. This is very similar to the Soy Bella, um, which I have an old version of. And I have found that sometimes this can be a little hard to clean. So what you want to make sure you do not do is let this sit around with pulp in it because it's going to make your life horrible later. So don't do it. Okay. So let's talk about what came in my box. I got the package that had this beautiful picture and you see it's a little almond cow face there um, because it was on sale. So I was like, woohoo, let's go crazy. And I love it. I love this handle. Um, this has a little plastic or silicone part that keeps this wood from rotting, from being wet. And I really think that that was very thoughtful. We get a cord, we get this filter basket, we get this outer cup or container, and we're going to talk about some different ways that we'll use this. It, of course, just like the Mio Mat, has its blades. It's all stainless steel that's touching everything, and the inside is all stainless steel, which is awesome. It also comes with a little recipe book that says drink outside the box, which I think is super nifty. And today we're gonna make a creamer and make um, a milk. So we're still gonna continue with oat milk. The one we made in the Mio Mat had some oil in it. So I thought today we would make one that's just oats and cashews. And when I do a different one, we're gonna make oats and sunflower seeds, oats and um, sunflower lecithin and we're just going to kind of just run the gamut. We are going to get to different nut milks, plant milk drinks, and soy milk for sure. So their oat milk recipe and their cute little drink outside the box, and I'm not sure how much of this you're going to see, but we've got water. They're saying whole grain oats, and what they mean by that is they mean oat groats that are soaked. Then there's maple syrup or dates. They're also saying chopped dates, which might be important to know because I think because it's going to be in a small container, it might be necessary to not use whole dates. They're using a half a tablespoon of walnut oil or avocado oil, 
teaspoon of vanilla extract and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, so that's very different because we've been using rolled oats so far. So we're going to continue using rolled oats right now. Uh, in Outrageous Oatmeals, I did oat milk with rolled oats, with steel cut oats, with Scottish oats, and with oat groats. It all works. You will need to soak oat groats, and that's what um, Almond Cow sells a lot of. So they have their own little line of, you can just go ahead and buy these bags of things. It is not the cheapest way to go. I think that buying things in bulk is probably your best bet. At Sprouts last month, I was able to get cashews half price, so I got three pounds. I've been getting some oats that I really like. And do I, oh, I do, because I got some more of them. <laughs> I actually have them in a package too. I've really been liking this Farmers in the Know gluten-free sprouted oats. And I believe this is about $10 for this bag, and it's five pounds. So, they're not cheap, cheap, and you can get cheaper, and it's all up to you. And one of the reasons I want to talk about oat milk first with all of this, with us adding a couple of teaspoons of cashews or a couple of teaspoons of something else, is because it's really, to make at home, it's the cheapest milk that you can make. All right, so the one thing that you have to be mindful of is this cup. So you can kind of see this is real hard and not moving. And this kind of, can you see? Yeah, you can see even just with the light, how the light changes. So because it has all these holes drilled in it, it is a weaker part of the metal. So we need to make sure that we're sitting these blades straight down, okay? And so it needs to be straight there and on because if it gets where it's not straight down, these super sharp blades can cut through the part that's perforated. And I'm not saying that to scare you or anything else. It's just we just have to be careful. Of all the reviews that I read about the almond cow, that was the one thing that people were upset about. And it's kind of an easy fix. It's a little bit like the Ninja Creamy, level off the top, and I've never had any trouble with that blade tilting and marking my pints. So I would assume it's a really similar thing. I, other than cleaning, have not used the almond cow before now because that's how I try to do things. So if you don't want any plastic touching your food, you do not have to put this cup in here. And you might be like, when I first thought about this, I'm like, no, it's plastic and metal. There's no heat on here. So when you can make smaller amounts of milk, and that's what we're going to do with our creamer. And on this, it actually has markings of 500 milliliters, which is what it's recommending for creamer. And then I'm trying, okay, it's on the outside here. See that? There you go. That's their half a cup, that's their one cup. I'm gonna measure this to see if it is like one of these cups or if it's a magic almond milk cup. I will go back and say with the Mio Mat, the Mio Mat cups are half a cup. So I actually doubled up on the oats when we made our Mio Mat milk, but it was so extra creamy. It reminded me a lot of full fat Oatly. And I thought it was delicious. Cheryl thought it was too thick. So again, we start with the recipe and then we kind of tweak it to suit our own needs. So we're going to do the creamer. Also, it came, it came with a thing that's talking about this basket lock alert. So it's showing exactly how we should be doing this. And we need to make sure it's lock right before blend. Okay. And that's, so they're trying to be very good about making it easier for you. And also, it's talking about how to use the collector cup, which is this plastic cup, to make either small, small batches of milks or creamers, right? So we're going to do that, and it gives you a sort of a little recipe over here. 
just going to kind of fill up a cup because I'm suspecting it's not really a cup. <laughs> and if we want to make something different, if a recipe said like one cup of rolled oats, we could take out a couple of teaspoons or tablespoons and we can put some cashews or sunflower seeds or something like that in there. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in here. And it's a real cup. <laughs> so that's exciting too. That makes things a little easier. Um, this is a Miomat cup, which is more of like when you're using a rice cooker or something like that. So it's, it's a little bit specific. The Creamer recipe said, when I look somewhere else, it's like one cup. So I'm going to take out about two tablespoons of this one cup of oats and I'm going to add in two tablespoons of cashews. And we're going to kind of keep that about the same when we do our, our big milk as well. Okay, so how we're going to do this is, oh good, I was able to sit this here this way. I'm going to move some of the oats. We are going to take some water. We're going to pour it up to the 500 milliliter mark. The most awkward way humanly possible. Okay. So we've got this. That's our water. We've got our stuffs. And we really are using enough stuff to make a full, like four cups-ish of milk, but creamer. And so if we get in here and we just kind of move those ingredients around, and I'm gonna look at this very carefully and make sure the basket is where it needs to be. Nope. Okay. So, First thing, we're going to plug this guy in. All right. We've got this in here. So we put this collector in here, and there is room for your hand to go. I was kind of curious about that. All right. And and it goes right on there. So when the blue light comes on at the end, it's hard to see with the lighting and everything. It's blue now. We're just going to press the almond cow button. There's not a bunch of different buttons. There's not a bunch of different choices. And then it's going to cycle through. And now for me, it's white. And it's going to go in about three different cycles. So all the milk makers start and stop, start and stop. And you can replicate that on your Vitamix, Blendtec, Ninja Blender, whatever blender you have. With oat milk in particular, it's really important that you don't heat it up. So we want to go, if we're using a milk maker, on a non-heated setting, if, we, if it has heat, the almond cow doesn't, so we're good to go. A Vitamix or a Blendtec will get hot as it keeps going. So if you do it in like 15 to 20 second intervals, that can help. It can also help if you put some ice cubes in there. Joanne Lakes does that and gave us that great suggestion. Um, so keeping it cold makes it less slimy. Since the blue light is steady, it's ready. Okay. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. It looks super creamy. Normally you take this and put it in the collector cup so it collects all the things, but let me find something to sit this in that'll hold it up. I think this will work. <laughs> There we go. And I'm just trying to let, there's still some dripping out. I'm trying to get that in there. But we can also, everything that's in here can get saved. Actually, this works really perfectly if you have one of these Pyrex cups. Okay, now I do notice that some milk got splashed around the edges, so it would need cleaning. So let's take this guy out. There's actually, maybe I filled it a little more than 500. We're going to make another milk, so I'm not going to clean this up, but I, or clean, <laughs> so I'm not going to clean out the almond cow. I'm obviously going to clean up the mess from this going over. This is my first time doing it, so I may end up having some better tips as I go along. I was talking to Mary that I ran into at Marshall's looking for cheap dates. <laughs> So I met Mary at Marshall's and she's been using an almond cow for several years and she's been doing this a lot. So what I think is cool is you could use this to make small amounts of milk. Now what I've heard is that some people still feel like it's grainy so I'm going to put it through a strain. Ooh, trying to put it through a strainer. Woo! <laughs> you guys. We'll just ignore all this. But I want to see how much is in the strainer and almost nothing. Okay, so I would say this oat cashew creamer would not have needed this straining. Okay. And I'm going to save this for another straining too. This is the creamer base. It's just plain. You could use it in things that called for regular cream. Or we could go ahead and put a couple of tablespoons of maple syrup and maybe a teaspoon of vanilla and call it vanilla creamer. And I'm just going to mix that up in here. I've got some vanilla. So I put a belt, and you can do this to taste too. You're like, I like more vanilla. Then you put more vanilla in. And then just get this little guy and we'll mix him in and then I'll see how much of all the other things I can get out and so the vanilla is going to turn it kind of a, a tan-ish color oh, it's delicious that is going to make an amazing London fog so I feel really good about that so this made about 12 ounces and probably a little bit more that got spilled. Probably, I bet you I spilled three ounces of this. I spilled a lot. I spilled a lot. <laughs> but I love these little OXO dressing containers. One of the reasons is it's great for dressings, but it's great for creamers or milks because you just hold it here and you shake it before you use it. And so if, we, if I went back tomorrow, I taste it, I'm like, it's not sweet enough, it doesn't have enough vanilla, I can just add some in. And if it's this full, a lot of times I'll just open this up and just put a little bit in there. And I have put syrup, homemade syrups in here, so I've put it up to here, put the lid on, opened that and poured the rest in. And it's, it keeps a really good seal. So I do like this a lot. So if you make creamers or small amounts of milk, this might work really well for you too. All right, so now for the exciting part and hold it here, which is a lot easier. So I want you to see there's a lot of pulp. Okay, so see there's a lot of pulp. Everything's in here. There's also a lot of liquid in here. And I want to try something for that. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse some of this off so that it doesn't get back into the bigger part of the almond cow while I'm making my next batch of milk. Let me get a fine mesh strainer over here. I'm going to get a handy dandy spatula. 
But in looking at this, if this was just oats, I think it's, you could do it with cashews too. We could use it in baking. I could turn this into some puppy cookies. Or some people are eating it just as breakfast cereal like this the next day. Because it looks a lot like oatmeal. I'm just curious to how much I can strain out of here. Because it just looks a little wetter than when I'm doing it like this. But of course it does because this is actually kind of a manual action instead of just having things in that cup. It could be, yeah, the stuff I'm getting down below. So you, so you could do this if you want to get every last bit out. So there's lots of things you can do with the pulp. You can dehydrate it and then put it in baked goods. You can freeze it as is. We could go ahead and um, make breakfast cereal tomorrow. We could add in a few things and either dehydrate or bake some dog cookies, something like that. And this is just a personal preference. A lot of people are like, I don't want to be dealing with one of these mesh strainers. And honestly, it's probably only two tablespoons that I got out of this. But just so you know. Okay, so... I took that mess that you saw and I literally just rinsed it. So let's look at that. Um, with the soy bella, when I'm making soy milk, this gets totally stopped up. So it could be because of what I'm using. I rinsed it out, nothing stuck in there. You can see through it just like you could before. So I'm impressed with that. Um, so there, there's that, there's that, that's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and make kind of our no oil added oatly alternative. So we are going to put about a cup of oats. And actually, I think I'm going to put a full cup of oats. A full cup of oats <laughs> in here in the little basket. Right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put two to three tablespoons of cashews. And you're going to decide this. This is what we're using in this, kind of to recreate the Mio Mat recipe of using coconut oil. So instead of using oil, we're going to use some cashews. You could also use some pecans, but that's going to give you a flavor or some other kind of fatty nut. Probably macadamias would work well as far as that. And a lot of the recipes, if you remember, will add a little bit of salt, like a quarter teaspoon of salt, and you can do that. What that does is it just preserves it a little bit. So if you're on a salt-free diet, just skip it. Don't worry about it. It will change the flavor a little bit too if you're able to use it. So again, we're gonna hold this, and we just kind of go through to get it down here where we can do it. And I'm going to hold it level, make sure it looks level and all that. And I'm going to sit it to the side for a second. There is a min and a max. And I'm just going to fill this up to the max. All right, so it's at the max line. Now I'm going to take this and I just sit it down in here and make sure I connect it where this connector is. And it's blue now and solid. And it says it's going to go through three cycles. It's white for me now. And I believe this is the third cycle. So they're calling the cycle where it runs and it stops. Runs and it stops. But what you'll be able to tell, and it's a solid blue now, even though you can't see that for all the lights and camera. Okay, so we're gonna take this up and we're gonna put it in our collector cup. And that just makes it stand and it lets it collect the extra 
part that's coming away, but it looks super fluffy and nice. I am making this one unsweetened because that's what I want. Ooh, it's a nice, <laughs> nice and frothy. Okay, let's see what it tastes like. Hmm. It definitely has a nice mouth feel. It's got that kind of nice oaty taste. Definitely doesn't feel slimy in the mouth at all. It does not feel as full fat as when I use the one teaspoon of coconut oil. So if it doesn't feel thick enough to you, you could add another tablespoon. I probably use two tablespoons. I think you could use up to a quarter cup of cashews to kind of wiggle between one tablespoon and a quarter cup of cashews to get that kind of magic mouthfeel that you want. But I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm gonna unplug it. We're gonna take our little jug and I put a funnel in there. I usually have a bigger funnel. And then I have this little bar strainer. We may not need it, just like with the creamer, but I'm just going to double check. I'm using it for checking. Because honestly, if I don't have to strain and do all that, that's another plus for the almond cow. And I'm curious at how much it fills this jar, too. And an easy fix if you're like, that's great, Kathy, but that was way too thick for me. You don't have to wait till next time. You can just add some extra water here and mix it really good. We're getting mostly the foam, so it's not as thick as it looks right now. That's just the foam part. And I'm going to see if there's, yeah, there's nothing in here but foam. So there's nothing in here. There's no cashews. There's no oat pieces. So I don't know how this would transfer with almonds. Some people are straining their almond milk another time. So I'm also going to come in here and both for cleaning purposes and for not wasting money, I want all of this out and in my milk jar. Because why wash that money right down the drain? It's not helpful. And things are so expensive right now. That's one of the reasons I wanted to start talking about milk. Because like $5 for a half a gallon is a lot. It's a very lot. Okay, we've got a little bit in here. Then I want to take off the collector cup and let's look and see how it looks as well as my filthy counter. So there you have it. It looks a lot like oatmeal. I'm going to rinse this top part off really good, especially under in there. You want to make sure when you're rinsing it, you don't get that top part that plugs into the bottom part wet because that's electronics. <laughs> and that will make you very unhappy when your brand new expensive nut milk maker is not quite working anymore. We don't want to have that. So again, with this, we could either let it sit here and try and strain some of it out. We could get a press. I've gotten something that I'm going to be ordering to see if I can press it down. I don't, my pota big pa potato masher, I think it's yeah, it's too big to go in there. And I don't really have, I don't have anything that's just good for pushing. So they do talk about you can take it and push through here to get some of that milk out of there. I'm uh, probably if you let it sit for a while, or I'm not sure if we can do it right here in the basket, but let's see. Let's see if we can, how much we can get just by using the spatula and the basket, if that's going to work. So remember, it was only like two tablespoons. It looks like more than it really is as far as liquid inside of here. And if I was going to dehydrate this, I would definitely want to get more of the liquid out see that's a little bit of the liquid and an oat 
<laughs> so we could keep doing it like that or we could freeze it and add it to different things. Um, we could also process it again. So that's another thing we could try and maybe do a smaller version of it. And maybe I'll do that just as a test and let you know in the comments. So maybe I'll put 500 milliliters, process it again and see if it's thick enough to kind of fill up the rest. So there you have it. This is the Almond Cow and the pros. I, I really like at least for this oat cashew combo, no extra straining. So if you hate straining, I don't like plant milk bags very much. Although Rossum Creations has a really great one and that's the one that I recommend. But I have feelings about the little pieces of things that get stuck in them. And I feel like with a fine mesh strainer, I can sterilize it in the dishwasher and that makes me feel better. One thing that I forgot to show you that came with it is this cute little bag so you can take it for traveling really easy, which I also like a lot. Um, the pluses are you can make small amounts of milk or creamer in here, which was surprising. A lot of the larger ones that have men and max, you can't go any smaller. The con is if you don't want your food to touch plastic, it is plastic. So I leave that up to you. You may be able to get some stainless steel container about the same size, but I am not sure about that. Um, I would not put a glass container in there, but I'm sure if you went to a restaurant supply store, you might be able to take the collector cup and find something. If I find something, I'll update you guys or put a link below for Amazon. Um, if you're going to clean this, it cleans up really pretty easily. You want to clean it immediately. Just rinse it. You could use a little soap and things like that. Um, when I first unboxed mine, because I wanted it to kind of get a little thorough cleaning, I went ahead and put water to the men, a drop of dishwashing detergent, and let it run a cycle, and then I rinsed it out from there. Um, they're really good. So what they say is don't get any of the black parts wet, right? And so, because right here, we've got a connection that's electrical and right here we have a connection. So just be mindful. I usually just hold it and use the spray to rinse it out. So it's pretty easy peasy. So the almond cow is for people who don't want to strain, people who do not need a heating cycle, who are not planning on making soy milk. This could be really great for you. Um, the pro of not having any heating elements or things like that is that it's less to break and less to upkeep. So that could be a pro. We'll see as I'm going through and using all of these much more how everything is holding up and I'll keep you updated on all of that. So I like it more than I expected to like it. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was like, why is it as expensive and it doesn't have a heating element? But I feel like it does kind of combine some of what you would get a Nutter or an Archmira or a smaller milk maker. With their recipes, they do have, and if you go to almondcow.com, they have recipes for hot drinks and things like that. And you might be thinking, how does that happen? You put hot water in here or they may have you heating something up on the stove. So that's the only thing that I think sometimes is a little misleading. Like when you think, oh, I can make cocoa in here, I think people automatically think it has a heating element. So just read through those recipes carefully, and I'll be back soon with more reviews.